Hello, I'm Helen Pearce and I'm Head of English. So what can I tell you about English here at Commonwealth? Well, the overriding aim of our department is to provide a curriculum that is both rich and exciting for our students. Our key aim is for all students to enjoy their experience here with us. As a core subject, we see students on a regular basis and in mixed ability classes, and we have to ensure that we are engaging young minds with content that's both interesting and informative. In an ever-developing and fast-paced world, it's vital that we have students who understand the context of the world they live in, and we aim to do this through the promotion of both language and literature. At GCSE, all students will have to take exams in these two areas. It's the department's aim to ensure that all students develop their reading skills, even those students who do not enjoy the reading experience, and reading underpins much of our curriculum. At Key Stage 3, in every year, students will read a whole play or novel, including Of Mice and Men, Great Expectations and Shakespeare, alongside short stories and poetry. This is then tied in with grammar and writing schemes to encourage the development of vocabulary and written skills. We also include a variety of fiction and non-fiction texts which develop the foundations needed for GCSE and beyond. Spoken language is another key element of the curriculum and we encourage students to take part in debates, structured arguments and presentations within the classroom. We use ICT in the classroom whenever we can and interactive whiteboards are installed in most of the English classrooms. That promotes interactivity and engaging fun lessons. Visualisers are regularly used to promote progress and best practice and we welcome the use of mobile phones for research and revision purposes. So that's just a flavour of English here at Commonwealth. Should you want to know anything else then please do email me at hpierce at commonwealth.co.uk. Thank you very much. Hi guys, thanks for clicking on what is probably the best lesson in the whole world, maths. My name is Mr. Stacey and I'm in charge of maths here at Commonwealth School, which means that essentially my job is to make sure that all of your lessons are fun and engaging and entertaining and that where possible, if needed, we provide you with the right levels of assistance and guidance to make sure that you progress as well as everybody else. But that also, perhaps from time to time, your lessons are sufficiently challenging if you love maths just as much as I do. Now, the setup in maths is as follows. You're going to have four hours a week of maths, um, which is about eight, well, which is eight hours a fortnight. The lessons will, will all be in the same rooms and will all be taught by, for the most part, the same teacher. Um, the lessons will begin with a short starter just to warm you up, give you something to get your teeth sunk into. And they will end with a small recap of the lesson. And then in between those two um, like bookends is where the main teaching will happen. You'll get homework once a week. It will just be a short piece of homework normally to recap what we've done over the week. But it's really to promote and nurture the independent learning that we really need from our students and that creates successful students in the future as we move forward into the GCSE years. What you'll do in lessons, um, our scheme of work, is that we will cover a wide variety of maths topics, namely um, algebra, data, number... There'll be some shape work and lots of problem solving in there. Each class will do all of the topics, but some classes might do them a little bit slower and perhaps not in so much detail, whereas others might go maybe a little bit quicker or delve a little bit deeper into the topics to really challenge the students. What that means is, because all of our students are doing essentially the same thing, when the time comes, or if and when the time comes, that we might need to change your classes, we can do so quite easily, safe in the knowledge that the move between the groups won't be too much of a, won't be too much of a jump for you, if you like. Now, lots of times we get asked, how, do I, how can I prepare for the move from year six into year seven and onwards? I think that the easiest thing, and it's the same answer I give even when year 12 students, so the, the students in their A-levels and they're thinking about they're going to finish their A-levels, I tell them the same thing. The best thing to do to get better at maths is just to practice your maths. Now, that might be at home or in the car or when you're going to and from places or before or after your dinner, whatever, but it might be just practicing your times tables. It might be looking at the ratio of things when you're cooking. It might be percentages when you're in the shops, 
or fractions of pies or pizzas or cakes, all the sorts of things that just come up naturally in life. If you, if you sort of keep working on them and keep talking about them, I think that will really help you before your move. Um, but equally, you know, don't worry if those sorts of things aren't something that you, you're going to be able to do and you're not perhaps confident with working at maths on your own. That is what we're here for and hopefully we'll be able to you know, turn you into a more confident mathematician over your time here. We were asked, or I asked some year sevens to just uh, what sorts of questions might you have wanted to know before we came up to the school and they asked, they gave me five things. So I've just got them written down here. I'm just going to, I just thought it might be interesting for you to know these five things. So one year seven asked me, what equipment do we need in maths lessons? And we've got a school equipment list. So you're going to need to bring all of those things. But for the most part, the most important thing is to get yourself a calculator before you come up to the school. So that's number one. Number two, do we do tests? Yes, we do do tests. We'll do tests maybe three or four times a year. Some will be in class. Um, and they're just to check that you are where we think you should be and that you are in a group or a class appropriate for your ability level. Do I have to work in silence, sir, I was asked. No, you do not need to work in silence for the most part. You can, you can normally talk if you're doing your work well and you're working with your friends and you're talking about the work, absolutely, you're allowed to do that. Do I need to show my working, sir? Yes, always. You, I think you do. You're probably encouraged to at your primary school right now and we will continue to encourage you to do so. And finally, do we have any online access to things? Yes, we have lots of websites that you can use that we have access to that we can give you when you get here so you can do extra work at home should you need to. Hopefully that covers everything. Um, like I said, my name is Mr. Stacey. You can contact me directly at lstacey at commonweal.co.uk. Please feel free to do so. I will reply or give you a call if you need to talk about anything. Other than that, thank you very much. I love maths. Hi, I'm Sarah Holmes. I'm the head of science here at Commonweal and this is my 11th year uh, teaching in Commonweal. The science department consists of 11 teachers and we work across 11 labs that have been recently refurbished um, so that they are all um, up to a really high standard. We also have three lab technicians um, who provide us with all of our practical work uh, during our um, lessons in the main school. Our goal in the science department is to develop the curiosity that students have, particularly around the natural world. Um, it's really important to us that we teach uh, science through our practical experiences and make sure that all students have the opportunity to take part in practical lessons. Uh, this builds on the work that they have done at Key Stage two at primary school where in year six they'd look at living things and habitats, um, animals, evolution and inheritance, uh, light and electricity. Uh, during key stage three we aim to teach science in 20 lesson blocks and each of these 20 lesson blocks builds on the work from year six and what they've done at primary. Um, we also spend our time uh, at Key Stage 3 teaching experimental skills and investigations and working on analysis and evaluations. By the time they get to um, the end of Year 9, we've already started teaching our GCSE subjects and we teach both combined science and triple science. This year, all of our Year 10 students have started on the triple science course. We use the Edexcel 9-1 GCSE and students will all take six exams across the three subjects depending on which GCSE they are taking. The exams are two biology, two chemistry and two physics and this incorporates 16 core practicals that they will do within the classroom. Many of our students uh, go on to do A-levels in science and then we also have a number of students doing BTECs and obviously apprenticeships. Uh, the most commonly asked questions that we get is, uh, when can we use the Bunsen burners? Well, everybody uses Bunsen burners in their first week when they come into year seven. Uh, we're also asked about practical lessons. How often do we do practical lessons? Practical lessons occur at least once 
every three lessons, sometimes more often depending on the subject we are teaching. And chemistry particularly has a lot of experimental work done uh, during the course of the um, teaching. Um, we're often asked about dissection. Yes, we do do dissection, uh, but that happens further up the school. And obviously students have the opportunity to either take part if they want to or to, to not take part. Um, it's entirely optional. So if you have any questions at all about anything to do with science, then please feel free to contact me at shomes at commonweal.co.uk. Hi, I'm Faye Green. I'm the Head of Humanities. And in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it's like to study humanities in year seven. So humanities is made up of three subjects, geography, history and religion, philosophy and ethics. And I might be a bit biased, but I think these are some of the most important subjects that you're going to study here at Commonweal. We want to help you try and make sense of this really complex world that we live in. And we try and answer some of the big questions in humanities, like uh, where do we come from? How do we live? And what do we believe? As well as all that, we aim to teach you some important skills that you can take forward into later life. Things like how to structure an argument, how to assess evidence, and how to analyse data. At the start of year seven, we spend some time introducing you to the subjects, getting to know you, and finding out about what you learnt in primary school. And we tend to focus on skills at first in year seven, and we teach you how to be successful in our subjects. We have a two week timetable here at Commonweal, and in year seven, you will have three lessons of history in the fortnight, three lessons of geography, and two hours of religion, philosophy, and ethics. And in religion, philosophy, and ethics, we will introduce you to the six major world religions, and we'll tackle some big questions, like why was the world created? And what's our purpose? What are our responsibilities? And we'll have a look at different ideas from different religions. In Year 7 History, we'll look at Britain before 1066 at first. And this is a good time because we, we get to hear all stories from what you've learned at primary school. Often students tell us all about uh, the Romans and how they influenced Britain. And after we've recapped that kind of stuff, we look at medieval England. Uh, and we go on to the Tudors and looking at the English Civil War. In geography, we get you feeling really confident about maps and using maps at different scales. And we introduce the two different types of geography, physical and human. And in physical geography, it's all about studying natural landscapes. And we look at climate and we ask, why are some parts of the world hotter than others? And how does that impact the plants, animals and people that live there? Um, we also introduce you to human geography. So it's the geography of people. And we look at settlements and shopping patterns and ask questions like, why are our high streets in decline? So to round up this video, I'm just going to try and answer some frequently asked questions that were often asked at open evenings when we can run them in the usual way. So we often get asked, what are the teachers like? Um, so what I can say from humanities is we've got a team of really experienced specialist teachers who do work really hard to support you as best as they can. So question two is, do you run any trips? Well, yes, we do. It's a bit tricky at the moment in the pandemic, but we do aim to run at least one trip per academic year for each year group. Um, some examples are in year seven, we take students to Kew Gardens, where we can look at plants from around the world and look at how climate has influenced their growth. So that's a good one. Later on, um, in year 10, we take students to Lulworth Cove, 
and we look at coastal processes. Uh, one of my favourite trips in year eight is to go to the Black Country Museum, which is near Birmingham, and you can learn all about Victorian England at that museum and what it was like to live during the Industrial Revolution. Uh, so question three is, what happens when I get to GCSE? Do I have to study humanities? Well, midway through year nine, uh, you get to have some choice over subjects that you want to continue with. And almost everybody at Commonweal does at least one of the humanities subjects and they take that forward. Um, and often we've got lots of students that do several, even all three of the humanities subjects. And we're really proud of the excellent results that we get at GCSE. Um, last question then, sometimes we get asked, how will studying humanities subjects help me? Well, as well as all the useful knowledge you're taught, um, we really like to focus on the soft skills that employers are looking for as well. So I don't know if you realise that the CEO of Nationwide, which is one of the biggest employers in Swindon, um, was actually a geography graduate. And geographers learn all about uh, spotting trends in data and analysing trends. So all the skills that you learn across humanities are really going to be useful for you in the workplace. So I hope that helps and provides a little introduction to us in humanities. If you've got any further questions, you can contact me uh, via email. It's fgreen at commonweal.co.uk. Hello, my name is Mary Ann Harris and I'm the Head of Creative Technology here at the Commonweal School. The Creative Technology subjects give pupils the opportunity to solve problems and develop their creative skills in preparation for both further study and employment. The subjects that are included in the Creative Technology faculty are computing, art, graphics and catering at Key Stage 3. In Key Stage 4, pupils have further opportunity to study all of those subjects with the addition of media studies and a vocational ICT qualification. At Key Stage 5, students can also continue to study computer science, art, graphics and media studies at A level. Let's start with art and graphics. So with art and graphics, pupils cover a wide range of topics and students can expect to engage with many artistic disciplines, including drawing, painting, mixed media, work, sculpture, photography, printmaking, and in graphics, digital illustration and Photoshop. Students work on projects together, both individually and in groups. At Key Stage 3, pupils will study a combined art and graphics curriculum. So this will expose them to a wide range of media, including the formal elements in art. They also develop a range of skills in graphic design, ranging from character design to digital illustration and using Photoshop. Projects then continue later on to focus on tone and different projects such as gargles and mask making and mythical beasts. Students in Year 8 will focus on their use of colour through themes such as landscape and perspective, responses to music and abstract art. Students doing GCSE art will complete at least two projects during Year 10 and 11, the first of which is mostly teacher-led and then it takes them through different assessment objectives for the course. The projects slowly become more student-led and then this culminates in an exam project in the January of year 11. Themes can follow anything, not natural organic forms, the man-made environment, portraiture, art of culture, conflict or decay. Students doing a GCSE graphics course will produce a portfolio of work over the two years. Students will study digital graphic design through the form of illustration, geometric shapes, photo manipulation and drawing skills. At Key Stage 5, Art A level is a linear course over two years and Year 12 is used as a foundation course in which students experiment with their media and ideas and then in Year 13 students undertake a personal study. 
On the A-level graphics communication course, uh, students are required to work in one or more areas of graphic communication, including illustration, advertising, packaging design and multimedia. Now on to catering. At Key Stage 3, the food lessons help students to read and understand food labels, check the provenance of food and to make more informed choices. This helps students to develop skills that will support them with a healthy lifestyle and skills that will support them throughout their life. The topics covered include basic knife skills such as peeling and cutting, developing cooking with different methods, refining their skills with more complex dishes and studying sections of the Eat Well Guide, including pasta making and pasta related dishes. They will cook and present their final dishes. At Key Stage 4, pupils can opt to study hospitality and catering at Level 1 and 2. The topics here include nutrition, the hospitality industry, and it also includes extensive practical work. On to computing. In computing at Key Stage 3, pupils study a wide range of topics, including information technology, communication, networks, data, algorithms, design, flowcharts and programming, including using Python, and they will also learn about e-safety. Later on in Year 9, students progress to more advanced programming and then can make uh, websites using Dreamweaver, and they will also do an e-safety video project. The GCSE options are split in two. There is a computer science GCSE and then there is a creative iMedia OCR course. In computer science, com uh, students will study and uh, take two exams. Paper one is focused all on computational thinking and programming and uh, paper two is all about theory and the theory and fundamentals of data representation including networks and cybersecurity and databases. And we also tackle the ethical, legal and environmental impacts of digital technology. The OCR Creative iMedia course is very creative. Students complete three units of coursework, which include pre-production skills, digital graphics, creating a multimedia website. And then there is also an exam. Those modules are weighted evenly at 25% each. Students can choose to continue their computer science study with an A-level at Key Stage 5. Media Studies is an option from Year 10 onwards for GCSE. Students in Year 10 will study different media industries. This would include advertising and marketing, film, music videos, TV and online media. Subjects which complement Media Studies are English, History, graphic, sociology, social and global studies. These important skills are attention to detail and analytical and design skills. The course is both theory and exam based and with a coursework component. And students may decide to continue their study of media studies at A level where the course looks at a number of media industries across time, such as advertising, music, film, TV, magazines, newspaper, video games, and online media. So to summarise, the subjects in the Creative Technology Faculty include art, graphics, catering, computing, and media. If you have any questions about these courses, please email me mharris at commonweal.co.uk. If you have questions about the content delivered in the course, please check the curriculum pages on our website. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Ali Sutcliffe, Head of Performing Arts here at Commonweal. As a performing arts school, we encourage our students to engage with the arts and provide students with an enriching and varied curriculum, both in and out of the classroom. Alumni students have gone on to great success in the arts, following their education here and then further education at providers such as Lane, Bird College, Performance Preparation Academy and BIM. We can proudly boast film producers, West End performers, stage pyrotechnics, songwriters, professional actors, 
dancers and musicians. Music. Our music block is only two years old and was designed by us to inspire learning within music and is where all music lessons take place across the year groups. We plan our curriculum around keyboards mainly and your child will gain basic keyboard skills through these lessons. We also use ukuleles, guitars, drum kits, bass guitars, and of course the voice throughout Key Stage 3. We teach units of work to explore different genres, time periods, and cultures, from Baroque minuets and the classical orchestra, to the film music of John Williams and music for computer games. There really is something for everybody. The topics are explored through listening, performing and composing music. Key Stage 3 students get two hours of music per fortnight, and this increases to five hours a fortnight if the option is taken for GCSE at Key Stage 4. One question we often get is, can my child learn a musical instrument? And the answer is yes, of course. Lessons are offered on all instruments and the voice. We have peripatetic teachers who come in each day to deliver one-to-one -one lessons from the music cooperative. It's simple to arrange by just filling in a form and organising payment. Lessons take place during the school day on a rotor system in the music practice rooms. Dance. Commonweal has its own purpose-built dance studio with changing rooms, sound system and lighting facilities. Students from years seven to nine are offered the opportunity to attend dance clubs during lunch times and after school which work towards various shows that are put on throughout the year. We also perform at various external events, such as the New College Dance Show and the Great Big Dance Off competition. All students take part in dance lessons in year eight on a carousel with music and drama. They have the opportunity to explore different styles of dance, so hopefully there is something for everyone. We offer GCSE dance in year 10 and 11. Students experience performance, choreography, and dance appreciation. At sixth form, we offer the CTEC in performing arts with the choice of specialising in music or dance. Students gain skills in confidence, organisation and communication whilst preparing them for further education and job roles within the arts industry. So what dance styles do we do? We study contemporary, ballet, jazz, African and street dance but students also have the opportunity to choreograph dances in their own styles for our shows. What do students have to wear? For clubs, students bring in their own dance kit or they can wear PE kit and bare feet. For GCSE dance, we ask that students wear all black dance wear and have the opportunity to purchase a GCSE dance hoodie, which is optional. Drama. We boast three purpose-built drama studios with sound systems and lighting facilities, which students are encouraged to use from year seven. Drama at Commonweal develops confidence, creativity and resilience through performance, design and analysis work. There are three strands to studying drama, which are practical performance skills, social skills and the analytical aspects of plays. Students will learn three areas to every task set, rehearsal, performance and evaluation. At Key Stage 3, practical based learning explores a wide range of topics and we choose these topics not only for their academic merits, but also for their wider cross-curricular education. We pride ourselves on creating an engaging curriculum, allowing all students to succeed. Students will also have an opportunity to see theatre, either visiting school or extracurricular. At Key Stage 4, we have a thriving uptake at GCSE, building on what students learn at Key Stage 3 and developing an understanding of drama practitioners and how to devise and script performances. Written work is embedded in the course. Theatre visits are an important part of the course, and we offer opportunities for students to perform to invited audience on a regular basis. Students will have a chance to see the work of A-level drama students and build on their knowledge of theatre. We offer A-level drama and theatre studies, which could lead on to drama school or university, leading to work in the arts. Do we just focus on acting in our curriculum? No, we encourage students to get involved in all aspects of drama and theatre, learning about lighting, sound, stage design, costume and makeup. 
This can be taken up at GCSE and A-level if students show an interest. So what clubs are available in the Performing Arts Faculty? Across our faculty, we offer a wide range of extracurricular clubs that all feed into our many performances that we do throughout the year. Some of these events take part at school to public audiences, and sometimes we're invited to take performances out into the community to showcase our work. In music, many of these clubs are singing groups that are open to different year groups. These take place at lunchtime and everybody is welcome to join. We also run a school orchestra during the autumn term that prepares for our Christmas events. During the year, there are opportunities for students to create their own bands and book practice rooms to rehearse in. The dance department offer lunchtime dance clubs to each year group that work towards our different events. And we also have various drama clubs that work towards public performances. We're often asked, what shows do we put on? As a performing arts faculty, we have various performances scheduled every term, and we also collaborate and put on two big events every year. Every two years, we also put on a whole school production during the autumn term. Previous shows include Billy Elliot, Fame and West Side Story. Within drama, last year, we put on three different performances of a new play and entered students into the National Theatre Connections competition. The dance and music departments also hold performances multiple times a year to allow our students to share their talents with an audience and develop their confidence. One other question we often get at open evening is, how do I get my child a place at Commonweal if we live outside the catchment area? If you live outside our area and your child excels in the arts, they can audition for one of 15 scholarship places awarded every year. Forms are available from Mrs Darian, the Heads PA, and auditions take place in January. Students can dance, act, play an instrument or sing, or perform a combination of these disciplines. At Commonweal, we really do value the arts. It has a secure and established place in our curriculum now and in the future. If you have any question about your child doing performing arts here at Commonweal, please email me asutcliffe at commonweal.co.uk. Hi, I'm Axel Romainville, the Head of Languages at the Commonwealth School. In Year 7, you'll have the choice to study either French or Spanish, and you'll get five other fortnight of lessons. You'll study many different topics. You'll start with animals, numbers, colours, family members, and you'll end up studying philosophy, politics, and literature at the end of Year 13. It's not just about studying topics. It's also about learning about the culture and another country. And therefore, we organise trips for every year group. In Year 7, you'll be able to go to France in Normandy and stay in a very nice castle for a week. In year 8 and in year 9, you'll be able to go to Spain and stay with a Spanish family and visit a Spanish school. In year 10 and year 11, we'll go to France and Spain and we'll visit pa Paris and Barcelona to help, to imp help you improving your Spanish skills. In year 12 and in year 13, we also go to Spain and France so you can understand more about uh, what it's like to live in the country. Being able to speak a foreign language is more than ever very important. We always think about holidays, about jobs, but what about your own language? What about English? Being able to speak French or Spanish will help, you, will help your ability to speak in public and will help you making your point and your point of view is very clear. If you speak a different language, that's fine, that's great. If you don't speak a foreign language already, that's okay as well. We'll teach you everything from scratch. You'll be able to decide if you want to study French or Spanish, so you do the language you want. And if you speak another language already, such as Portuguese, German, Japanese, uh, Bengali, we're able to help you to do a GCSE in this language as well. I'm very much looking forward to see you next year. And I'm just going to say one thing. A bientôt. Au revoir. Hello, I'm Mrs O'Brien. I'm Head of the Global Learning Faculty at Commonweal. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about what global learning is and also about what social and global is on school, our school curriculum. Global learning is about preparing our young people to go out into our global world and live in it and be successful. 
And um, part of this is being prepared to go out into the global marketplace and having the skills and qualifications to get good jobs. The other part of it is to help them understand the world, to be able to keep themselves safe, to look at issues critically and be empathetic, um, to prepare them to challenge and contest the inequalities and the unsustainable nature of the world as it is at the moment. In social and global lessons, we cover four main themes. Uh, to start with, there's a health and safety theme. Um, this includes everything from road safety to the dangers of drugs and alcohol. There's also a mental health element across each year, uh, looking at issues such as eating disorders, dealing with stress and anxiety. It's also where we raise the prevent agenda, learning with an emphasis on critical thinking and unity. The second theme is relationship and sex education. We emphasise the importance of consent throughout our whole teaching on relationships. We have mapped the themes in the government guidance across our curriculum as to where we think they sit most appropriately. So year seven start with issues of friendship and emotional literacy, right up to year 11 where we deal with issues such as domestic violence and contraception. Another theme is careers and futures. In this theme, we try to open students' eyes to a range of different career paths that they might not have heard of before, and also emphasise the transferable skills across these many career paths. Throughout this section, we look at personal finances. For example, what is a credit card? And um, why might you get a mortgage rather than renting? The final theme is global learning. Although global learning happens right across Commonweal in all different subjects, in social and global lessons, we get to have a strong focus on some of the issues and explore them in more depth. We focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and consider how individuals can make a difference to the world around them and make it a better place. In addition to this, we're responsive to what happens in the world around us. If there's a large event, we'll set aside curriculum time to explore it. For example, if there's an election, we will look at what all the different parties are offering and what the results of the election would be and what impact that might have on society. I sometimes say that social and global studies is a place where students can learn all the things they need to know to go out and be successful that don't fit into other areas of the curriculum. But it's so much more than that. It's a chance for students to look at the world and explore and discuss ideas in a safe and supportive environment. If you have any questions, then please get in touch. It's cobryan at commonweal.co.uk. Hello, I'm Mr Foley. I'm the Futures Lead at Conwell School. Uh, the Futures team sits within Global Learning, um, which is made up with, by Mrs O'Brien, uh, Mr Booth Howe and Mrs Falecki. Um, part of what we do is making sure that when you get into years 10 and year 12, uh, you find a work experience placement. Um, and also we can set up um, various meetings uh, with our careers advisor, Mrs. Falaki. Um, some of you may have heard of the Futures Weeks and uh, we are part of putting those together, be it virtually or uh, face to face. Um, Futures Weeks are all about allowing you to think about what you want to do in the future and how school is going to help you get there. Throughout the year, we have various businesses coming to speak to you. Um, this may be virtually via Teams or face-to-face, -face, but what we're trying to do is to get your lessons to link to the outside world, to link to what you want to do. Hi guys, my name is Miss Scrivens and I'm in charge of Key Stage 3 PE here at Commonweal. Um, so first of all, welcome to Commonweal PE. Um, our mission in the PE department is to enable every student to participate in a broad, balanced and challenging curriculum um, that will inspire them to sustain um, regular, healthy, lifelong physical activity um, within and beyond Commonweal um, for the rest of their lives. At Key Stage 3, um, students will undertake four lessons a fortnight that last 60 minutes in duration um, and they'll be taught in single sex, appropriately challenged groups. Commons Wheels P curriculum is quite broad, it's quite balanced um, and hopefully it provides lots of traditional and alternative activities for your son or daughter to participate in. 
It provides students with the opportunity to participate in team sports, individual sports, and focuses on developing skills, linking skills and applying skills in competitive and challenging situations. Our curriculum also provides students with the opportunity to develop essential life skills um, and qualities such as communication and confidence by providing them with the opportunity to lead, coach and officiate within their PE lessons. The curriculum uh, that we currently offer at Key Stage 3 has also inspired many students to take examination-based courses in years 10 and 11, our sports studies and sports science vocational courses, as well as um, adopt Key Stage 5 courses that are vocational and take on A-level PE. Um, in addition to that, many students go on um, to become um, successful in obtaining a place on our football education programme, which is run um, in cooperation with Swindon Town Football Club, which is great. Um, in terms of assessment, students are baseline tested at the start of every year um, to ensure that they're in the right set and their lessons are appropriate and challenging for them. Um, and we will also assess students in every single activity they do at the start of their block, at the middle of the block and at the end of the block. And then we will use their final assessment at the end of the block um, to calculate their overall outcomes um, that will go on their report um, system. The PE faculty itself... Um, prides itself really on the vibrant inter-house competitions we offer at school. Um, we offer all students the opportunity to participate in competitive activities within both team sports and individual sports. Um, and they will compete for their house in inter-house competitions within their PE lessons at the end of every block. Um, in addition to this, we also provide students with extensive opportunities to get involved in extracurricular activities after school, um, where they participate um, in both um, competitive sports and as well as that recreational sports with all the other schools in Swindon and even schools outside of Swindon um, sort of on a national level. We're really really proud of our success locally and nationally. We've had some excellent achievements um, over the years um, and that's something we're incredibly proud of. We believe that all student successes and positive contributions to school and external sports should be celebrated. So within PE, we also offer our own personalised reward system, our sports pin system, um, where students can um, achieve a sports pin for either contributing to school sport by performing in three sports um, regularly across an academic year and representing the school in those sports, or if your son or daughter participates at a high level outside of school, um, at county level or above in a specific sport, they can also achieve an excellence pin for doing that um, to recognise their contributions both to school sport and to sport outside of the school community. As a faculty, we also provide students with the opportunities to facilitate their learning outside of the school environment by organising and leading um, a range of local, national and international sports trips and visits. Um, for example, we regularly lead trips to Bath, to Team Bath Netball. Um, we've done T20 cricket um, and the National Basketball Finals in London. As well as that, we also run international trips. Um, we go to, um, to France and Italy skiing. As well as that, we go to Spain on a water sports trip, um, which again is a great opportunity for students to, to learn and develop and um, become more confident in outside of the school environment. Frequently asked questions that um, we constantly get uh, from students mainly, will we still do PE lessons if it rains? Um, the answer to that is yes. So please be prepared, um, bring a towel, um, bring layers so that you don't get cold in your lessons, but we will be outside in all environments and PE will go ahead. Can I wear jewellery in my PE lessons? Um, unfortunately not, um, it does have to be removed. So please, if you are gonna get any piercings or any jewellery um, onto yourselves, please do that over the summer so it has time to heal so you can get it taken out for when you arrive in September. Um, do I need football boots? Um, so yes, girls and boys will need football boots um, because they will undertake football blocks and also the boys will undertake rugby blocks as well where that footwear is required. Um, do I have to take part in PE lessons, even if I'm unwell? We completely understand that obviously you get poorly and you're not well enough to participate practically. So if you can bring yourself a note and your PE kit to change into, then we won't make you participate as a performer, but we will ask you to be involved as a coach or an assessor or an official. OK, and then you're still learning. Top tips for PE. OK, bring your PE kit to every lesson and work hard because you only get out of PE what you put into it. When you get here, try a new sport or a new club that you've never tried before that interests you. 
and get involved in as many different sports as you can. So you can represent your house in, into house lessons or your school or your county because doing all of that is a massive achievement. But most importantly, if there's anything you're not sure about, please don't be afraid to ask. If you have any questions or any further inquiries, please do not hesitate to contact um, Mr. Andy Staff, who's head of faculty on astaff at commonwill.co.uk. Many thanks and we look forward to seeing you in September.